Once again, I would like to thank uh, David Howard from uh, Houston, Texas, who, by the way, is in town with his wife. Uh, and we do have a swell uh, gift for them. We have the lovely Late Night with David Letterman Sponge, certainly the envy of, of every homeowner in North America. There it is, a keepsake to remember his trip to New York City by. Thank you once again, Mr. Howard, for your help. Uh, my next guests are two of television's most successful writers and producers. Some of their credits include The Bob Newhart Show, The Carol Burnett Show, The Tony Randall Show, The Mary Show, and uh, recently a show called Open All Night. Please welcome two very funny men, Tom Patchett and Jay Tarsi. It's nice to see you, uh, you guys here. Thank you very much for coming to New York City. You're here working on a project now, aren't you? Yes, we're, we're, we're uh, casting a, a new show we'll be doing um, mid-season uh -huh. on NBC. And who, who would we see in this show? It's da uh, Dabney Coleman. Do you know who Dabney Coleman is? I reckon he was... Uh, Dabney Coleman is in 9 to 5, the movie. He was the boss. He's uh, in On Golden Pond. He's a mustache? Yeah, he had a sort of a balding hair. Jane yeah. Fonda's boyfriend in On Golden Pond. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's a dandy. Yeah. Well, good luck to you on the show. Now, you've well, also you, worked David. with some, some other monsters. <laughs> some right. other monsters, Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. Monsters in, in show business. Oh, Bob yeah. Newhart. Um, <laughs> Carol Burnett. Tony Randall. Uh, now, do you still are you, do you keep in touch with these folks? Are you still good friends with all no, of them? No, we don't see any of them. We, uh, <laughs> uh, we, we, we just hang around with uh, Trevor Howard and, and um, John Gielgud and uh -huh. Ralph Richardson. We play cards with them. And, <laughs> but... We heard that, uh, Siri, that Trevor Howard uh, doesn't want to play anymore, and we want to know if, if you'd like to just, you know, get in a pretty good poker game. It's, I, I know, I'd, I'd love to, but I don't play cards. You don't gamble? I don't play cards. Thanks, okay. anyway. Just thought we'd ask. Well, it's very <laughs> nice of you to ask. Now, uh, when I met you first, gentlemen, I think, uh, first met you, gentlemen, um, it was on a show for another network with Mary Tyler Moore. It was a variety show. Yes, yes, and, yes. And uh, some very good people on that program. Oh, some really good ones. Mary. Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, it was a variety show that lasted about 12 seconds, I think, on the air. But we, we liked it. David was uh, David was, was on. He was the, sort of the MC, and there was Michael Keaton, and uh, Michael Keaton, who is now who suddenly is now, a hot young film yes, star. Yes, he was in yeah. Night Shift, a movie that's going to make him a star. Yeah. And uh, Swoosie Kurtz Swoosie was on Kurtz. the show. She has her own show now. Yeah, boy, and it was fun too. You know, and and we read that. Uh, we used to dress you in a porcupine outfits and... <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, that was actually, it was a dog suit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no. But it wasn't, I mean, it was your dog suit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we never supplied you with that dog suit. You, <laughs> you wanted to wear it. No, this is some confusion about whose dog suit it was. Well, no, it we wasn't. certainly didn't own, own a dog suit. Now, uh, when, you, when you worked... <laughs> when, now, when you worked with uh, Bob Newhart, did you ever dress him up in uh, dog suits at all? No, Bob. Bob was. Bob sort of... liked to wear an owl costume. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was a cons. Excuse me. He was a cons. Sad. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, it's not the theme to the Newhart show. You know. Excuse me. Could we turn it down a little? What is it? <laughs> Somebody got a radio? Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. Excuse me. I'll be right back. I'm sorry about this. I'll, I'll be right back. I can handle it. Don't worry about it. I'll excuse you. No, it's happened. it happened once, one other time. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Oh, jeez. Listen to this racket in here. Will you do me a favor, Troy, and turn this record player down? It's not a record. It's a tape, then. Well, whatever it is, turn it down, will you? Why should I? I'll tell you why. I'm right in the middle of an interview down there. That's why. I can't even hear myself think. So? Oh, God. Hey, Dave, 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 Dave. It's not the way to handle this. Uh, yeah, but you know, when I think all the times I took him fishing, and then there were the trips to the zoo, and the afternoon at the ballpark. Yeah, and... yeah, but, but getting angry will just make things worse. Yeah, look, Dave, we're both fathers. We've been dealing with this kind of stuff for years. Let us talk to the boy. Well, okay. And, and Dave, don't be angry. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. That's all. <laughs> Hi, Troy. Got a minute? No. Look, I can see that you're a sophisticated kid, so I'm not going to try to 
put anything over on you. Ring, ring. Is that the phone? Say, I think you're right. I'll get it. Hello, who's calling? Wow, it's Pete Rose. How do you like that? It's baseball superstar Pete Rose. Right. Hey, Pete, what can I do for you? Oh, okay. Well, thanks, Pete, and goodbye. You know, he was just calling to say that he thinks getting to sleep early is the most important step you can take to becoming a famous baseball player. Big deal. I hate baseball. See, I told you, cheap chicks aren't going to work on this kid. He's too smart. Yeah, you're right, Tom. Let's just give it to him straight. Look, Troy, Dave's under a lot of pressure. It's hard work trying to be wacky and irreverent day in and day out. You think he likes having to sit down there and talk to authors and bag ladies? No, of course he doesn't. It takes time for him to come up with fresh, innovative material and a, and a lot of hard work. Or else he'd have to do small town news every night, and you wouldn't want that, would you? No. Well, then when Dave tells you to turn down your music because it's disrupting an interview, try to be a little more understanding. He's under a lot of pressure. He's doing the best he can. Do you understand? I think so. So uh, will you turn down your record player? What if I don't feel like it? I don't even know who you are. Ring, ring, ring. Hey, it's the phone. I'll get it. Hello. No kidding. This is Pete Rose again. Hi, Pete. What's that? Fine. Fine. I'll tell him. Oh, he, he says the only thing left to do is to smother the kid with a pillow. <laughs> That's what Pete wants. Sorry, pal. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, and uh, television producers uh, Patchett and Tarsus are with us tonight. Also, tomorrow night, uh, Robert Klein will be with us, and it's our big bar mitzvah gala, so you're going to be sure and wanting to join us. You're going to want to be sure and, you know, just be here for the big bar mitzvah show. That'll be tomorrow night. Hi. Did you get it taken care of, boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. great. Thank you very fun. much. Appreciate the help. Now, so, yeah. um, Newhart mainly worked in street clothes, though. So, oh, yeah, pretty much his own wardrobe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, now, bef before you get into uh, the world of uh, producing and writing television shows, you actually had a stand-up comedy act, didn't you? That's right. Five yeah. years. About five years. Very erratic. We never knew how we were going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what got us out of it. Standing Where? up in front of an audience. And what kind of places were you working? Toilets, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we had a stand Well, let's up. name names here. Well, oh, we played a lot of clubs. Back in the 60s, you know, the late 60s, the, when, when, when Stiller and Mira and Burns and... But even before, you know, right before you burst on the scene, <laughs> we, we were doing... We were out there, you know. We had a, a small coterie of like 10 or 12 people that knew who we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a uh, kind of a cult and a real dedicated cult following. Some yes. of them may still be alive. Are there people who know who we were when we were a comedy team? Thank you very much. No kidding, that's pretty You're impressive. Beautiful. Thank you. You're beautiful, as you say that? Yeah. Now, you, uh, you, you also had a, uh, is this correct, a, a record album? Yes, it was called Instant Replay. It was, uh, it was still a, available. Yes, it, no it isn't, I don't think it is. No? Yeah. I saw it for 99 cents the other day. Um, it was about professional. Speaking of children. Yes, sir. Could, if I could indulge my son. Just, I just want to say it's my son's birthday. And not actually tonight, not when the show will be shown, but it's actually his birthday. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say happy birthday to, to my son. So it's, it's, it's not tonight, but Matt. by the time, right. Matt, by the time the show airs, it will be his birthday. No, it's his birthday tonight. Oh, it's his actually, birthday now, so. Actually, and I'm never home on his birthdays. Uh -huh. I'm always out of town. On business. And it has, I'm sorry, I didn't mean, yeah, in, yeah. on business. So, right. so now when, when Matt actually sees this, it'll be some two weeks later. And Won't mean a thing no, to it'll be, him. yeah, meaningless. Okay. okay. Uh, well, that's, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, now be before the, what were we talking about, the stand-up comedy? What kind yeah. of material would we uh, hear in your act? Well, the satirical vignettes, which, as you know, go over very, very well in uh, places like, uh, you know, Las Vegas, where we were actually part of a nude review one time. We, but we, I mean, we were dressed like this, uh -huh. but we would come out, after following the bordello number, mm -hmm. we'd come out and do a satirical sketch about, uh, you know, Howard Johnson's restaurants or something, which the audience was just really ready for. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that goes well with the uh, naked people and booze. Is it some good satirical material? They, could, yeah. they couldn't wait to see us. Yeah. Really. Uh, <laughs> and kind of uh, like now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then, you, what made you get out of it, uh, stand-up comedy? Tired of standing up and 
Uh, Just wanted we, to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a break. Yeah. And you got into television producing and writing first, right? Writing. Yeah, we met Carl Reiner one time uh, on a talk show that we did. Uh, I think Steve Allen's show years ago and Carl liked what we did and said I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys an entire career and you'll be indebted to me for the rest of your life <laughs> <laughs> and he did and he did you know yeah. sort of yeah. We're, yeah we're functioning you know family men we yeah that's right well Jay starred in the jerk you yeah. were in the jerk yeah, this is Steve I was the Martin. star I played no it's a joke <laughs> now you're we're confused now yeah but you have written some films uh, that the folks would remember yeah, and know. Well, yeah. yes yeah. we have written a couple of films we wrote a uh, a muppet movie a second muppet movie called the great muppet caper which was you know c real cute uh, uh -huh. furry things uh -huh. <laughs> doing satirical vignettes <laughs> <laughs> and we also wrote now hold on to your hats we wrote a movie called up the academy thank you and and uh, with, now I don't I did not see up the Academy. Was that a? It was no good. <laughs> <laughs> no good. That's too bad. No good. I think that's what the reviews said. Now uh, this is no good. Yeah. <laughs> and who who was responsible for it being no good? I mean, y you obviously didn't write a no good script. Well, uh, we could try. You could st well sour grapes. Is, you know, it's everyone just sour. but us is the answer. Yeah. Uh -huh. We wrote a. We wrote a perfect script, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. then, but it somehow it was uh, butchered along the way. Yeah, no, it's too bad. We had nothing to do with it. And, but you have the new series coming on, and, and another sure Muppet, yeah. another Muppet movie. Yeah, gosh, things are going real well for us. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna just keep going. Yeah. Now, when when is the uh, when is the new Muppet movie, and what's the name of this one? It's all it's all on the you know it's all on the <laughs> planning stages. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't see. know. I see. Okay. Well, they're yeah. planning a Muppet movie. No, no, they're going to do one. Well, you're actually going to do one. It'll be yeah. it'll be shot in New York. Hopefully, it's called Muppets. The legend continues, and uh -huh. it's the story of uh, of how the Muppets actually, when they graduated from college, how they came to New York <laughs> uh, to perform satirical sketches. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, I don't want I don't want to cause any problems, Jay. But it seems that Tom has all the answers, and you tend to be pretty vague on this stuff. Well, Tom, Tom's are you still a team? He's got a poker game. Well, I have to play Trevor, cards. Tom's, Trevor Tom's bright. Tom does. He's good at this stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. You know. We. You know what we're going to do? We have. Uh, this is something you're going to enjoy. Nightcap Theater. Whoa. As soon, as soon as we come back, you think you've had fun now? Oh. Wait till we have Nightcap Theater. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hotel accommodations for most guests of Late Night with David Letterman furnished by Berkshire Place, a Dunphy Classic Hotel in exchange for this announcement. For reservations at Dunphy Hotels in the U.S. and Europe, call toll-free 800-228-2121. Easy. Hi, and welcome back. Uh, the produ 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 producing team of Patchett and Tarsus, pardon me, they're still here, and we're now going to uh, Nightcap Theater. If you have time, you just want to go ahead and read that. Well, once again, it's time to grab yourself a large, cool, carbonated beverage. <laughs> Hose down the hamster. Sit back and relax as we present Nightcap Theater. I'm sorry, you're supposed to pause it. That's too late. Now, yeah, go ahead. A feature especially designed for that segment of the audience that can only follow a movie when they see one minute every two weeks. Last time, as I'm sure you remember, flying saucers were seen over Washington and Colonel Edwards was concerned. <laughs> Prepare to be startled as we watch installment number seven oh, of our science seven. fiction classic, Plan Nine seven. from Outer Space. Very nicely done. Colonel Edwards gave the signal to fire.
then as swiftly as they had come, they were gone. <laughs> but not soon enough for us. <laughs> Be with us next time on Nightcap Theater. Thank you very much, uh, Jay. Now, we have to turn off the power here. I want to thank my guest, friend Leibowitz, Tom Patch, and Jay Tarsus. Of course, our announcer, Bill Wendell, Paul Schaefer in the band, and you know him, you love him, you can't live without him, David Howard from Houston, Texas. Now, tomorrow night is our big 90-minute bar mitzvah special. Be sure to join us with Robert Klein, also Stupid Pet Tricks, and the bar mitzvah boy, Barry Weil. Is it Weil? Very well. Now he'll be here with his friends. He'll be here with his friends and relatives, and I hope you'll do the same. Thank you. Good night. on national television. They just returned from the cellar door in Washington, D.C., and last night opened here in New York at the famous Plaza Nine. It's a review at the Plaza Hotel. So welcome them to television land and to our show, the team of Patchett and Tarsus. <laughs> And now that we've gained your complete acceptance, we'd like to slow down just a little bit and uh, do something you would probably expect us to do. Impressions. Everybody these days is doing impressions, and far be it from us not to have some ready. So as a matter of fact, we'd like to go directly into our world-famous, very difficult 26 impressions in a row. Now, the material for these 26 impressions <laughs> has been extracted from some of the most famous movies ever to come out of Hollywood. These are movie impressions. <laughs> now, the movies that we'll be impressing from are Gone with the Wind, My Fair Lady, The Ten Commandments, Ben-Hur, The Hustler, Gigi, On the Waterfront, Bridge Over the River Kwai, Lawrence of Arabia, Carousel, The Longest Day, The Victors, Giants, Fans of Iwo Jima, Citizen Kane, Captain's Courageous, Boys Town, All the King's Men, Born Yesterday, High Noon, Scudder Who, Scudder Hay, Bad Sea, Bad Basket, Bad Day, Black Rock, Bad and the Beautiful, and Birdman of Alcatraz. Right. Now, those are the movies, and here are the impressions. Hey, Atlanta's on fire. Water by some flowers? Move those chairs. Open up that seat. Eight ball in a side pocket. Dunk it, Ed. Charlie Charles. Mark, oh, it's hot. Dude is busting out all of them. France, we're landing in France. Not the big land. It's a crowd. Saddle up. Rose Rose well, this is Kansas. It's a lot of water. Mr. Chairman. Come here. Whoa. Hot. Bad. 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 Hot. Sir. There you are. Wonderful, the wonderful thing about that is, folks, that that's just a small sample <laughs> of the uh, carnival-like atmosphere we're going to create up here for you. Right. Actually, what we do best is satire. The satire is our main container. It's our main bag. Ba satire is our main ba bag. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. Excuse and the first me. piece of satire we'd like to do for you is a study in public apathy, which we call apathy, comma, public, dash, a study in. <laughs> So this is it, huh? The Big Apple. Yeah, well, a lot of people are still calling it New York. Suck in some of that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you do too much of that. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Canyons of Steel. East Side, West Side, Jolly Men. And the Great White Way. Oh, it's just like any other town. Oh, no, it's not like Philadelphia. Take it from me, I know, I'm from Phil. Oh, you got your brotherly love. Yeah, we've had our problems with that. Yeah, you got your, uh, <laughs> got your Liberty Bell. Oh, that's crack. Uh, and you got your Mummer's Day Parade. We don't even have one crummy mummer. Yeah, but there are eight million stories in the naked city. Yeah. And we're just two of them. Oh, we got you know? all that, it's true, you know, but you get used to it. Oh, yeah? You get used to hey. it. Hey, how'd he get used to something like that? I mean, Rockefeller Plaza with all the... No, no, I'm flashes. talking about that man smacking that old lady around in the doorway across the street. Well, it's like, huh? hey, there's eight million naked people in the city, pal. There's something going on every minute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Isn't that what you call a mugging? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Look at him. See, he, he knows we're watching him. He does? Yeah. Because <laughs> he's using karate. Oh. Yeah, they never use karate unless someone's watching him. You mean him. this kind of stuff goes on all the time in broad daylight? Oh, no. Some of your veteran muggers are still working at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you see that punch? Yeah, doubled her right up. Nice Punch, fella. Hey, listen, we don't hear stuff like that. Uh oh, that did it. She's fallen down. Right, now what he'll do is see. He'll smash her glass. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, then he'll huh? take her pocketbook and run away.
away with. Yeah, well, maybe we can help. Let's, let's move in closer, huh? You don't want to move in closer. It's almost over. <laughs> Guess you're right. The crowd is starting to thin out already, isn't it? Yeah. Sure, you know, people can't stand around all day. They got jobs they got to get back to. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, there goes the mugger. I can't believe it. He's handing out autographed pictures. <laughs> that is unusual. They generally pass out ballpoint pens. Yeah. What a way to make a living, oh, huh? You're telling me, boy, that's easy money, all right. You know, if it wasn't for a couple of things, I'd consider going into that line of work myself. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you? <laughs> well, in the first place, I wouldn't want to be seen running up Fifth Avenue with a handbag. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> and all things considered, I like being a cop. <laughs> For our first encore, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like to uh, go on record by saying how sorry we are that the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet are no longer on national television in prime time. Yeah, we're sorry. Yeah. Could be for a number of reasons. Might not have been modern enough. Might not have had enough pizzazz. You know what I mean by pizzazz? I think so. Yeah, well, see, now we want to bring things up today. We want to get things straight. And we want to give you a modern version of the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet featuring those perennial cut-ups, David and Ricky. <laughs> hi, Rick. Oh, hi there, David. Golly, Rick. What are you doing? Oh, nothing much. Just standing around waiting for my voice to change. Oh. <laughs> sure hope it goes higher. Oh, I don't think it will, Rick, because you're already 25. Maybe you're right, Dave. Yeah. Golly, how come you have such a worried look on your face? Well, holy grail, Rick, I didn't think you'd notice. The reason I look so worried is because I have to ask Dad for permission to use the family car. Well, golly days, Dave. I thought you had a roadster of your very own. Well, I sure do, Rick. But my wife, June, was getting labor pains two minutes apart. She had to get to the hospital, so I let her borrow the car. Oh, that's really decent of you, Dave. Yeah. Kind of selfish of June, though, because it puts you in a real fix. You said it. Because <laughs> I'm in a race against time, you know. I got to be down at court by 4.15 to act as defense counsel on a peeping Tom case. I'm a lawyer, you know. Yeah, I know. Mom told me. Oh. <laughs> and besides, Dad and Thorny are already down at the courthouse waiting to see you in action. Oh. They even bought new sweaters for the trial. <laughs> but Dad's car's still here. Maybe you could use that. Well, golly heavens, Rick, I'd never take Dad's car without him first giving me his permission. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Remember that time I borrowed Dad's car and he almost raised his voice at me? Oh, I sure do. <laughs> and the thing was that you even had his permission. Yeah, yeah. but I did sell the motor. Yeah. Good thing, good thing Dad had motor insurance. Mm -hmm. Or you'd have been in the doghouse. You can say that again. You'd have been in the doghouse. Hey, Dave, uh, why don't you just ask Mom for her permission to use our dad's car? Well, holy crow, Rick. Mom would probably be too upset to give me her permission. Tomorrow's the day she goes to the plastic surgeon to have that grin removed from her face. <laughs> That's probably so. Yeah. I wish I could help you out, David. I'd lend you my motorbike, except Wally already borrowed it to go to the mall shop. Oh, Wally sure is a character. Wally sure loves to go to the mall shop. Wally's a good chum. Wally's a sissy. Yeah. <laughs> you said it, Rick. Remember that time he made you dress up like a girl? Which time, Dave? The time Mom got so mad she swore at him? Yeah. She called Wally a rascal. Yeah. <laughs> but later on, she apologized for being so cross. Sure is fun to reminisce about the old days, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it still doesn't solve my problem. Well, golly, Dave, I have another idea. Huh. Why don't you just go to that next door and ask Mrs. Thornton for use of the Thornton vehicle? Well, that's not such a good idea, because today's Wednesday, isn't it? Golly moly, Dave, you're right. Yeah. We're not supposed to bother Mrs. Thornton on Wednesdays. She's busy making obscene phone calls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't solve my problem, and if I don't get down to that peeping Tom case pretty soon, Dad and Thorny are really going to be upset. Oh, well, how come Dad and Thorny are going to be so upset? Because if I don't show up, they'll probably be convicted. <laughs> Two of the brightest young men on the comedy scene today are Patchett and Tarsus, former members of the advertising profession. Their routines are fresh and funny and topical, and it does give me great pleasure to introduce them to you, Patchett and Tarsus. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening. I'm Tom Patchett. And I'm Jay Tarsus. Yes, he is. And for those of you who don't already know, Mr. Tarsus is one of America's foremost young authors. Among other things, he's written the shortest book in the world, 
congenial Mississippi sheriffs. <laughs> Mr. Tarsus, it's nice to have you with us this evening. Yes, it is. I understand, I understand that you have a new book in the works. Yes. What's the nature of this book? This is a medical biography. And what's the title? It's called De Gaulle, De Man, and De Bladder. <laughs> We're the uh, comedy team of Patchett and Tarsus, and now that we've gained your complete acceptance, we'd like to get things rolling by slowing down just a little bit. And we'd like to do something for you that you might well expect we would do, impressions. Every entertainer these days is doing impressions, and far be it from us not to have some ready for you. Yeah, far be it, you know. Right. So as a matter of fact, we'd like to go directly into our world-famous, very difficult 26 impressions in a row. Now, the material for these 26 impressions has been extracted from some of the most famous movies ever to come out of Hollywood. These are movie impressions. The... Thank you, Jay. Okay. Now, the movies we'll be impressing from are, in order, Gone with the Wind, My Fair Lady, The Ten Commandments, Ben-Hur, The Hustler, Gigi, On the Waterfront, Bridge Over the River Kwai, Lawrence of Arabia, Carousel, The Longest Day, The Victors, Giant, Sands of Iwo Jima, Citizen Kane, Captain's Courageous, Boys Town, all the King's Men, Born Yesterday, High Noon, Scudder Who, Scudder Hay. So they hit. Bad Seed, Bad Bascom, Bad Dad, Black Rock, Bad and the Beautiful, and Birdman of Alcatraz. Right. Now those are the movies, and here are the impressions. Hey, Atlanta's on fire. Want to buy some flowers? Move those chariots. Open up that seed. Eight ball in a side pocket. Fuck it, Ash. Charlie Turner. March. Oh, it's June hot. is busting out all of France, we're landing in France. Nuts. It's a big land, it's a proud Santa land. Santa Rosebud. So this is Kansas. It's a lot Mr. of water. Chairman. Come here. Whoa. Hot, bad, bad, bad. bad. Hot. Sure. There you are, ladies. The, uh, the miraculous thing about that is, is that that's just a small sample of the carnival-like atmosphere we're capable of generating. <laughs> that's true, but we're at our best when we're fooling around with satire. Right, satire is the main thing that sets us apart from a juggling act, you know? <laughs> As George Carlin mentioned when he introduced us, uh, we relinquished our distinguished careers in advertising. Fired, to, uh, I think. Fired is a much better word. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, we were forced into show business, and the rest of the story of Patchett and Tarsus is, of course, legend. Yeah. But having been in advertising, we're immune to most types of commercials. But there's one type of ad that we still have yet to get over, and that's the automobile dealer who does his own commercials on the all-night movies. <laughs> Hello out there, all you new car buyers and soft cell fans. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying tonight's all-night movie. It's called Sitting in a Chair. It stars Arlene Whalen and Mr. Joe McCrea. And it's brought, it's brought to you tonight and every night by the gang at Calvin Feebash Studebeal. It's the largest Studebeal dealer in this area. Feebash will save you cash. By the way, I'm Calvin Feebash. <laughs> Well, I don't want to hog the spotlight. Oh, no, not me. I've asked one of our personable salesmen making his first appearance on television tonight, Mr. Lee Nelheim, to come up to the studio and talk to us tonight. Now, Lee is always eager and ready to serve you, right, Lee? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Lee, why don't you get things rolling by flashing our audience that famous feedback Studeville smile? <laughs> That's the same infected smile that he's been flashing for us at Feebash for how long now, Lee? Uh, I don't know, Calvin. Seems like a century. <laughs> well, I'll tell you exactly how long it's been. It's been 26 warm, wonderful years. I'll tell you that right to years. your face. Yeah. yeah, and Lee, let's tell the folks a little something about yourself. Okay. How did you come to work for Feebash Studebill in the first place? Uh, on a bus. <laughs> you know, I didn't have my own car right, in 1941. You, you started out with us as a young salesman, and through hard work, you became what, Lee? I became an old salesman. <laughs> Well, that's the uh, voice of experience talking to you folks. And Lee, strictly off the cuff now and in your own words, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about those brand new, spanking new, 1967 Studebills we have in our showroom for this year. Well, they're really good cars, Calvin. They get good mileage. They steer okay. Most of the motors are still holding up. Well, they're the talk of the town, folks. And Lee, what about those different makes and models of Studebills that we carry now? Which ones do you like best? Oh, the green ones, Calvin. <laughs> Green ones are good, Lee, but the red I, ones stink. Yeah, well, I was really talking about the different makes and models of Studebills that we carry. I was referring to the Loomis, the Lena, the Letman, the Lane, and the brand new 1967 Studebills Studolero. And Lee, yeah. what about veterans? They're very courageous. <laughs> courageous 
this is the devil. Yeah, you know, I, know, I, was thinking, I was thinking more about the big 25% discount that we offer oh. to all our veteran friends out there in Lee. Yeah. Tell our veteran friends out there all they have to do in order to qualify for that big fee badge, 25% discount. Well, you have to show us your driver's license and cross your heart and hope to die you're a veteran. <laughs> we'll sell you a car. We don't care. <laughs> What other groups besides veterans, what other groups besides veterans can qualify for the big fee badge 25% discount? Uh, Non-veterans. <laughs> Non-veterans and Christians. Oh. Some ladies, too. All right. Let's, let's get back to our all-night movie now. It's brought to you tonight and every night by the gang act. Uh, Calvin Fee Bash Studebill. Fee Bash, save your cash. Come on down. Come on down. Yeah, come on down. Calvin Feebash Studebill, located at 167342 Peter Bruegel Boulevard in Mount Morency. Or call us at 930. Telephone number. Get the telephone number. 86 Look or something. Right. Right. And when you do come down to see us at Feebash in person, no matter what you do, be sure to ask, especially for a car. 